Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. Steadiness is preciousness. Steadiness is preciousness. You feel this on a plane. Imagine a plane wasn't steady. What would that experience be like? If you've ever had a surgery, Steadiness is very much preciousness. <laughs> For us, we have been steady through spring of 2020 we completed together, summer of 2020, autumn of 2020, winter of 2021, spring of 2021, and we just completed summer of 2021. This week was the first day of autumn for most of us. Steadiness is preciousness. We are all rich to have that which is precious in our lives. Bhagavad Gita's chapter 3, verses 20 to 25, focus on leading oneself. And verses 26 to 30, this morning we're going to complete 30, is about leading others. Leading oneself takes precedent over leading others. In terms of leading others, whatever we identify with, we are limited by. Checking in with all of you, you can hear me and see me clearly. Whatever you identify with, you are lim <coughs> limited by. Whether it's a mortgage or a family member. Those who are lazy and aggressive, tamasic and rajasic, they identify with those qualities, so they're limited by them. When we are not intentional, we start to identify with them, and then we face the same limit the same inefficiencies, which is why I've encouraged you to observe. Certainly you should observe yourself, but observe others also. If someone is crying and they ask me for help and I start to cry too, then I can't help them, correct? I have to smile to help them with their tears. When leading others, force is not possible. A couple of evenings ago, we had a parent-teacher interview for Vyasa and his teacher. And she was telling me, in our class, we do not push our students. We want them to develop confidence naturally. And that is a fine insight into education you cannot force education. And if you do force it, it's not education, it's information, right? Like many of you, you grew up just memorizing. But what did you do with all that you memorized? So this has to be natural. And to give you a visualization, whenever you're driving fast, 100 kilometers, 60 miles, 
and you come to understand, appreciate you're going the wrong way, do you slam the brakes on and turn? Your car will flip. You'll hurt yourself and everyone else. So what do you do? You slow down and then make a U-turn. These are all insights into leading others. Engage them. Engage them in the way they are and steadily educate them about how they're going to find completeness. I've observed working with those who are younger when I teach in our Balivar camps as an example. Once those kids are exhausted physically, they become receptive mentally. So I become their physical trainer. You just run. <laughs> Everyone do 5,000 jumping jacks. <laughs> Then we will study Ramayana. <laughs> so engage them and they will become more receptive. I started off sharing with you, leading oneself takes precedent over leading others. Simultaneous to leading others, you have to keep leading yourself. And what this means, you are more than your experiences, you are more than your equipments. You are more than the ego. All of that is living. You are life. Living is a verb. That which is ever-changing. Life is a noun. That which is never-changing. You may feel that this is too abstract. Just change the word to happiness. Do you want a happiness that is ever changing? Or a happiness that is never changing? In Sanskrit, we use words like that which is changing, bhava, it's becoming. That which is never changing, bhava. That is a feeling. So feel joyous while you lead others. And leading others is now completed in verse 30. This is a summary shloka verse of this train of thought. Ujjaguru Dev Swami Chinmayananda loved this verse. He would make seekers chant this two, three times. This is that important. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasya dhyatma chetasa nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jwaraha. First quarter. Karmani, actions. Which actions? Sarvani, all actions. Mai. All actions are not to be directed to you, but are to be directed to me. That naturally is Sri Krishna. This is the translation. Here is the implication. Anyone who wishes to feel independent joy cannot depend on pala or result. They also cannot depend on karma or action. They also cannot depend on guna or propensity. I went through that yesterday. Anyone who wants to feel independent joy has to be more than the experiences, equipments, ego. They have to depend on all which is divinity. This is my reference to the BMI chart, yes? Not the body, not the mind, not the intellect, not the V. We're above that. And only when we depend on that which is the highest will we feel the highest. How to do this? Sanyasya, which means to let go. Adhyatma chetasa, 
let go of the dependency of experiences, equipments, and ego by holding on to Mai, that is Sri Krishna, Adhyatma Chetasa with your whole being. Chetasa does mean mind, but this is qualified by adhyatma. Adhi means relating to. Atma means that which is closest. This is the translation. The implication is hold on with your whole being to the divine. And when you're holding on so tightly, you will naturally let go of any external dependency. And this has to be dynamic. That's why I said it has to be with results. It has to be with actions. It has to be with thinking. In our culture, at the completion of, let's say, worship or study, we often engage in arti. I'll explain that another time. But at the end of arti, Light is shown. And show me what you do. Imagine I'm holding an arti thali or light. Show me what you do. You warm up your hands, right? You bring out your s'mores. <laughs> what we're supposed to do, and we usually just do that, you bring that light to your head, then to your heart, then to your hands. See, that's what adhyatma cheta size. Let this light not just be intellectual, it has to be mental too. I have to feel this. Only when I feel this will I engage or express. That's my hands, correct? I do so much with my hands. I write, I type, I clean, I cook. It's my hands. That's that expression. So the next time this light is offered to you, make sure you consciously head, heart, hand. That's Adhyatma Chetasa. Sri Krishna keeps on zooming into this message. So practical. The third quarter, Nirashihi, Nirmamo Bhutva. Bhutva means be. This is how you should be. What? Nirashihi. The word Asha means hope. And it is a lovely word. Many of you are named Asha. Hear the references for one, not two. Have a sense of deservership. Hope in a negative context is I hope I'm going to become happy. That's deservership. What's packaged into this? Near mama. Mama is always about I, I, I. That's doership. Sri Krishna is going from a macro plan in the first line to a micro plan in the second line. How can I hold on and let go? Let go of deservership, doership. Shared differently, deservership is future-oriented living. Doership is past-oriented living. Very practically, in terms of the past, what often steals us from us is regrets of the past. So what should we do? Learn from the past. What steals us from us also in reference to the future? It is anxiety. So what should I do? Plan for the future. This learning and planning helps me to tune into the present. And when you fully tune into the present, what do you feel then? Presence, that independent joy, that Sri Krishna. Vigata Jwara, letting go of all that you are not. Yudhyaswa. For Prince Arjuna, that is fight. For us, that is engage. Engage in life. Engage in living. Engage in your responsibilities. More to be shared.
when we continue on Monday. From inspiration to application, your application on Tuesday was to go from accepting to adapting to observing to enjoying. That's the sequence that we should be engaged in in regards to leading others. First accept them, then adapt to them, subtler than that, deeper than that, observe them, enjoy them. I was reading a reflection from Vishal from Toronto and he was sharing, unless one is intentional, one won't get to enjoy, correct? This doesn't happen automatically. Your application from Wednesday was <coughs> to come up with three practices to check the ego. Different than what I shared with you. And the point in this is, are you following this? Are you following this? And I was reading a reflection from Jagdish from Mumbai. And he was sharing one way to check the ego is mingle with all types of people. Mingle with all types. Your application yesterday was to share a reflection on Chinmay Mission Niagara's website. And lots of you did. I read through every one of them. Some of you did it minutes before <laughs> Meaningful Morning started. <laughs> To come to unity, the word community means come to unity, this has to be a comprehensive experience. It can't just be with me, it can't just be 15 minutes. This has to be daily. I was reading a reflection from Kathy from Valparaiso and she was sharing, the only insecurity we have in our lives is when our mind makes us unsafe. Physically, we're all safe. It's the mind that makes us unsafe, correct? Your application for today, I now want you to come up with a leadership list, but not about leading oneself. This one will be about leading others. So that is verses 26 to 30, five points. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Be safe, be sound, be serene, be happiness.